In 2007, Blackstone bought Hilton for $26 billion, a deal that would bear over a 200% return years later. This is a case study of a leveraged buyout, or LBO, whereby the purchase was backed by $20.5 billion in debt, $5.6 billion in equity, yet cash was offered to shareholders of the company at a 40% premium above stock market prices. Welcome to Hotel Valuations Explained via the Blackstone Hilton LBO deal. This is an exciting journey of financial terminologies explained that many CFA candidates, MBA students, and business owners may draw benefits from understanding. Let's dive in. Hotel companies are unique assets with unique valuation model choices. It's typically best to leverage the income capitalization approach. Another approach is the sales comparison approach. The sales comparison approach as an alternative approach compares the property or properties to similar hotels that may have sold recently. However, given the uniqueness of each hotel and market conditions, this approach may not always yield accurate estimates. Back to the income capitalization approach. It may sound complex, but it's rather straightforward. You estimate the hotel's net operating income, or NOI, and capitalize it at an appropriate rate, known as the cap rate. How do you calculate NOI? It's gross income minus operating expenses. And the cap rate? The cap rate is simply how many years it would take to pay for the purchase of a company from its income. Present it as a percentage. A cap rate of 20% means that it would take about five years of income to break even. In the hotel industry, average daily rate or ADR and occupancy are key, including keys, which are the number of rooms available in hotel jargon. A high ADR and occupancy lead to higher income. Blackstone didn't shy away from refurbishing Hilton properties incurring capital expenditures, or CapEx. Why? Higher quality hotels often can lead to higher ADR and occupancy, which in turn increase the NOI. Here is where incremental cost-benefit analysis comes in. We weigh the renovation costs included in the CapEx against the expected increase in NOI. If the added benefits outweigh the costs, the decision to renovate is justified. Remember, Blackstone didn't have to purchase Hilton with its own borrowings. In some cases, assuming the debt is enough. That is an aside. This brings us, actually, to the concept of cost of debt and net present value, or NPV. The cost of debt can be calculated by multiplying the debt interest rate by one minus corporate tax rate. Here's a twist. Blackstone could refinance the debt of Hilton if they could secure a lower interest rate, effectively reducing Hilton's cost of debt. This does not increase the NOI because debt interest payments are not operating expenses, but it does increase net profit, which can be reinvested for future enhancements of a company. Now, the NPV, or net present value. The NPV estimates the profitability of an investment in present dollars. It considers the present value of Hilton's expected future cash flows, including the increased NOI from the renovated hotels, and subtracts the cost of the investment. The Hilton deal wasn't purely financial engineering. When Blackstone took over the company, they mandated that management at each hotel perform the task of their employees during training. This would lead to better operational decisions that really paid off. There were many other improvements as well, uh, but this one is often highlighted. By 2018, Blackstone exited Hilton with over $14 billion in returns. This is from the $5.6 billion in equity originally invested. And that's how Blackstone turned Hilton's story around. Understanding hotel valuations is not just about formulas. It's about understanding the narrative behind the numbers. Stay tuned for more real-world financial adventures.